All right, so we're live recording. Uh, as we mentioned last time, we, we take, took a day off for uh, weather. Okay, here we are, everybody survived, that's good. Um, we'll continue on from there. So we basically just kind of pause the course and that's, that's no trouble at all. Um, we've got, we have a day or two flexibility in, in this class. So we're okay at this point. Um, it does mean we had a bit of a pause between uh, when we did SolidWorks last and, and now, but that's that's okay. Uh, just kind of a quick review of, of what we talked about. We we started out using SolidWorks last time, right? And we did a quick tutorial. We're going to continue on with that this time, right? So uh, if you can get to the file, the part file that you made in lesson one, um, We'll use that today, and right? we'll continue on with that today. But if not, it's it, it won't take you longer. You make it if you had to, but we'll try to find it. Okay. All right. Quick review. We talked about a few things. I mean, we talked about uh, we mentioned the idea of a sketch, right? And um, within the sketch tools, we talked about the idea of releasing the tool, right? Releasing the tool. And that's things like using the escape key on your keyboard, um, the green check. These are kind of the green check you will see throughout SolidWorks. The green check is basically telling SolidWorks I'm done with whatever it is I'm working on right now. Okay. Um, so it's, it's just a nice thing to, to know. But the escape key on your keyboard will also Basically, if I draw a rectangle and I don't want to draw any more rectangles, I need to tell SolidWorks I'm done drawing rectangles. We call that releasing the tool, releasing the rectangle tool. So I need to hit somehow tell SolidWorks I'm done with that. The green check mark does that. Escape key normally gets us done too. Okay. Um, a little bit later, we'll talk about three dimensional sketches, but right now our focus is just on two dimensional sketches. And in a sketch, um, needs, if it's a two-dimensional sketch, needs a flat surface. Right? It has to live on a flat two-dimensional surface. That can be a plane, front top and right planes, which are already built into SolidWorks, or that could be, um, a, a, we later on we'll talk about putting in more planes than just the front top and right, but it could also just be a flat face. So some flat face within our model will serve just fine as a flat surface upon which we can draw our sketch. Okay. And then we talked about the simplest way of creating material or modifying material. Uh, the sketch doesn't necessarily create material. It just creates a reference, a drawing, if you will, that we can use then to generate solid material. We generate a couple of simple ways we can generate solid materials is through what we call extrusions, right? There's a couple of extrusions. There's the boss base, an extrude boss base that creates material. And then there's the cut, the extruded cut that removes material. In both cases, the sketch is gonna control what gets made, basically. I'm, I'm drawing the cross section with the sketch and the cross section then it's going to get extruded in the third dimension, either creating material in the case of boss base or cutting material in the case of an extruded cut. All right, so that is very quickly a crash course in what we talked about last time, okay? Now, what we're going to talk about today is uh, doing assemblies and drawings within SolidWorks. So there are there are three file types for SolidWorks. There's actually many more, but we're just going to talk about three. We're going to talk about three file types for SolidWorks. The first one we've already seen, that is the part file, right? So the part file is a, is a 3D model of a real or 
imagined object. And that's what we made last time is we made a part file of a single imagined object. I'm sure it exists somewhere. We could probably 3D print it. Um, well, we could 3D print it, but it, that's that what we created last time was a part file. A part file uh, uses an SLD PRT, that's dot SLD PRT file extension. What the heck is a file extension? Well, we don't have to get too deep into computer science and computer literacy here, but we do need to talk a little bit about file structure. Um, so a file extension, if you're not familiar, that's what the computer uses to know what type of file it's dealing with before it tries to open it with any software. The file extension will tell the, the operating system like Windows or Android or Mac OS what type of information is contained in this, this file and how it should process it, what software it should open. So your operating system will say for all .pdfs, use uh, Adobe Acrobat or something to open those, right? For all .docx, use Microsoft Word to open those. Anything that is .sld, if your computer has SolidWorks, it will tell the computer, use SolidWorks to open it. And the PRT is, is simply telling it, this is a part file, open it with all the algorithms it needs to make a part file. Um, most file extensions we see are like three or four characters, like JPG or JPEG, that's JPEG, that tells your computer that's a picture file, right? Um, but SolidWorks are, you know, there are actually six characters. That's Again, I don't, I don't know of too many softwares that will use six characters for their file extension, but SolidWorks does. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now that's, again, that's the first file type and we've already made a part file. Let's talk about the next file type. Sorry about that. That's what we talked about the next file type. What we're going to start looking at today is we're going to do an assembly. And if you've had experience with Inventor before, you probably, uh, they will also, just about any three-dimensional CAD program uh, will typically have the ability to do an assembly. An assembly is a 3D model that shows how parts and or other assemblies interact. Right, how they interact with each other and, and um, motion is possible. You can have assemblies that are designed to have motion within them. I do say parts and or other assemblies. You could have what we call sub-assemblies. So if I was to make a, a SolidWorks model of let's say a car or um, maybe a, an all-terrain vehicle, I would probably have a sub-assembly specifically for the engine and a sub-assembly specifically for the transmission and then I would have a larger assembly that would show how all those bigger, small, or all those smaller systems within that big system fit together, right? So my engine assembly would have all the components, the pistons, the valves, and all the gears and everything within that engine. There'd be part files of all of those showing how they all interact together. And that would be one assembly or sub-assembly. And then again, for the car, the entire car, I would have a larger assembly showing how all the sub-assemblies, the the transmission, the engine, all the components, maybe of the interior, maybe each seat is its own sub-assembly. So again, an assembly shows how it could be, for us, I, I doubt we're gonna do any sub-assemblies. We're probably all gonna do um, you know, assemblies of just parts, but you can do assemblies of other assemblies easy enough. The, the way they work is, is much the same way. Um, so motion is possible, right? You can have assemblies where you have moving parts within them. We'll see that from time to time. Um, it is going to use, it uses what's called mates to illustrate, illustrate how 
components fit or interact. So that's what assemblies are going to use mates. Assemblies are going to use mates. Now, uh, and also the assembly uses an where the part file uses a dot SLD PRT, the assembly is gonna use an at dot SLD ASM file extension. Now, these are in big capital letters here. Absolutely useless. Yes, I'm pausing for dramatic effect. These are absolutely useless uh, without associated files. Raise your hand if you want to get a zero on your midterm. Anybody? No hands going up. Pay attention. You send an assembly. I cannot open your assembly, period. I cannot open your assembly. I can open it, I just won't have anything, nothing to display. You send me an assembly with the parts that that assembly uses to put together. You send me the assembly plus the part files, I can open that. The assembly itself is useless. Assembly plus parts or assembly plus anything that that assembly uses, that's useful. Good question. So is the assembly file just the file that pulls their files? It, so present, yes. Okay. If you've built old web pages, right? Old web pages where you, the web page without the pictures that it references is useless. It's the same idea. You're exactly right. The assembly does not contain the parts. The assembly just says, go find, tells the computer, go find this part file, go find that part file. Here's how they fit together. But the assembly does not contain the parts itself. It just explains how the parts interact. So I cannot do anything with your assembly if you don't send me the parts or the other assemblies that the assembly uses, full stop. Questions about that, that is very important, right? I have given zeros on the midterm before for sending me assembly only because we'll do a couple of assignments throughout the semester where you're gonna send me an assembly plus part files. And so more than once you had an opportunity to understand, you've got to send me the assembly plus the part files. And um, I had uh, more than once I've had uh, um, individuals that I'm pretty sure are subcontracting out their part files throughout the semester and they just don't didn't get it. And they just would send me an assembly on the midterm and I gave them zeros because it's that is not your first opportunity to learn that lesson. Right. And we've, we've talked about it and I will talk about it when we review for the midterm. Right. Don't send me an assembly. Send me assembly plus everything. I make sure I have everything I need to open that assembly or else don't bother sending, okay? Clear as mud, does that make sense? That is very important, right? Very, very important. You send an assembly, send the files that go with that assembly. Otherwise, don't send it at all. Okay. Um, what else? Okay, so that's, that's a good start for assembly. We can look at one in SolidWorks here in a second. Let's talk about the other file type. I mentioned there's three file types. We'll explore the other two file types today. We've already seen a part file. Today we'll do an assembly file and we'll also do a basic drawing file. So a drawing file is, uh, for us, our pre predominantly what we're going to use a drawing file for is to generate multi-view drawings of parts or assemblies, right? So in previous lectures, we talked about doing some basic hand drawing. We talked about the multi-view drawing. We said, if I draw something that is three-dimensional on a two-dimensional media like paper, right? There's going to be some sacrifices. But if I draw two-dimensional projections, two-dimensional views of that three-dimensional object, those two-dimensional views are completely accurate. 
they just don't tell the whole story. So I have to have a multi-view drawing that shows multiple views, multiple accurate two-dimensional views of the same object. And that way I can communicate all of the information. SolidWorks will do this for you. If I generate a part file, three-dimensional object, it will automatically generate for me front, top, and right views of that object in a drawing file. Okay. It's pretty cool. And, and if you make, and we're going to see it today, if I make changes to the drawing, it will force those changes to the part file and vice versa. If I make changes to the part file, it will automatically update the drawing file accordingly. They're all linked. It is, it is, it is incredible what uh, this will do for us. Um, <clears throat> again, I cannot stress this enough. These are useless. Those of you that can't see me on the camera, I'm drinking water right now. Pausing for dramatic effect. Drawing files are useless by themselves without associated files. Just like the, the assembly was asked, you know, they, just like the assembly, the drawing does not contain the part files. The assembly uses the part file and explains how that part file looks and, and the views that we specify. It has to have the part file to display those views, period. So if you send me a drawing, send me everything that goes with the drawing, or at least make sure I've got it. I've got access to it. This is the same thing if I'm sending an assembly to a client or I'm sending a, a drawing to a client, right? Now there are, I should put a, uh, a, a sub point here. There are what's the, you can do what's called a detached drawing. SolidWorks in, in recent versions allowed us to start doing what we call detached drawings. Um, do not require, and we won't do a detached drawings here, but I just, I don't mind mentioning it. Right, so the attached drawings do not require the associated files, but they are read only. Or at least I'll put it this way. They're not linked back to the part file. I should say that, right? Not linked to other files, okay? Now, again, we're not going to do associate or detached drawings. It's not hard to do. It's just a checkbox or change an option. But what happens then is if I, if I make a drawing file and I specify that's a detached drawing, that breaks the link then with that drawing file and the part files, right? So all, then I can send the detached drawing to somebody and that's all I would have to send them. I don't have to send them my CAD model, or anything, but all it's gonna display is the views of that part, right? And that's honestly, that's way beyond what we need to do today. Um, just to understand for our purposes, just like with the assembly, you know, if you're going to send me an assembly, send me the associated files. Same thing with the drawing. If you're going to send me a drawing, for our purposes, assume that I can't open it unless you send me the associated files. Okay. If we get more advanced than that, that's okay. We, then we can talk about that at that point. Questions so far? Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, what's the, uh, what's the file of course, the yes. Uh, that's, it's pretty simple. It, it kind of based on the others, we can pretty well figure that out. It's, it's going to be dot S L D D R W. Uh, that is your file extension. Good question. I got on my soapbox about preaching about don't send me drawings without files. And I forgot to tell you the file extension. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, other questions. Okay. Um, let me try to explain what can happen here, okay? So let's say, uh, you know, I assume most of you probably used a cloud or you maybe used Canvas to send yourself um, part one, right? So let's talk a little bit about file structure because computer literacy is not necessarily a prerequisite for this course, but it sure helps, okay? So let's talk about your computer. On your computer, you're gonna have like a C drive, basically. And I don't know exactly the structure there, right? It's, um, 
And on your C drive, you're probably gonna have something like, somewhere you're gonna have a documents folder, okay? And you, you, next to it, you'll have probably like a downloads folder. This is a common thing you, you find in Windows. It's documents folder, downloads folder, pictures folder, my pictures or my documents, depending on the version of Windows you're using. Um, now, if I, so let's say that I, if I force the computer to save part one in the downloads folder, that's, that's what you want to do. Okay. Now, if you go to your email or wherever you sent yourself your part one file and you just hit the open button, it's going to put down here in some temporary um, Chrome folder and it's going to have a weird name, IXEF9302. If you just hit the open button on your part one, if you download it from the internet, you email it to yourself. I don't know how you say it. If you've got it on a flash drive, then you don't have to worry about what I'm about to tell you, okay? But if you've emailed it to yourself, save it to this computer to work with it, okay? Because then you can control and you wanna put it like in the downloads or put it in documents, control where you put that thing. If you're working on your own computer, this probably doesn't necessarily pertain to you. But if you just, if you, from a website at part one, you just hit open, it's gonna put it down here just arbitrarily wherever it feels like putting it, okay? <clears throat> All right, so here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna, and then today, right, you're gonna make part two dot doc. So it's gonna have you in a tutorial, make part two. And then you're gonna make also um, ASM one. I don't know if it's not dot doc. <laughs> S-L-D-P-R-T. I don't know why I called it dot DOC. That's kind of funny. I know, right? Old school word there. Okay. So you can make part two. We'll make assembly one, S-L-D-A-S-M. And you're also going to make today drawing one or whatever they have you call it. S-L-D-D-R-W. Okay. So if you do it wrong and you just open part one, you don't download it to your computer. You just open it. Windows is going to put it wherever the heck it feels like. Who knows where it is, right? You're going to have to actually go look for it. Um, you're going to load all these to Canvas. Okay, so you can load these, you can load this. So in Canvas, you're going to send me part one, part two, uh, ASSM one, and then drawing one. You're going to load all these to Canvas. And then I'm going to pull them down on my computer. And so somewhere in my computer, right? So I've got my C drive, I've got documents. Somewhere in documents, I'm gonna have student files. I'm gonna have your name. I'll have a folder for you. And then I'm gonna put your part one. I'll put your part two, your assembly. And your drawing. I'm gonna put them all in the same folder. That's what I'm gonna do on my computer. I'm gonna put them all in the same folder somewhere. I'll make a folder for you, put them all in the same folder. When I open assembly one, well, let me put it this way. If this is how you set them up on your computer, right? So you've saved assembly one and part two in the same folder, but part one is somewhere else. When I open assembly one on my computer, where do you think it's gonna go look for part one? somewhere that doesn't exist, right? It's gonna go look in my temporary internet folders on my computer. It's gonna look for some weird temporary internet folder that your computer created that mine doesn't have. And it's gonna say, there's not a part one there. Steve, what do you want me to do? And it's, it's gonna do a pretty good job. Modern versions of SolidWorks do a pretty good job of saying, hey, I found this one. Is this the one you wanna use? I'm not sure. And, and I'll tell it yes, and it'll be okay. Older versions of SolidWorks, I it was not pretty. Newer ones, it, it does a pretty good job of that. You can save all of us some time and effort if rather than putting it there, put it right here before you start making these other files, put it in all in the same place, right? 
So if you put them all together in the same folder within Windows, because that's what I'm gonna do when I get them to my computer, does that make sense, right? When I put them in my computer, I'm gonna put them all in the same folder. Make sure on your computer, you put them all in the same folder. I know um, I love my smartphone, right? I love my smartphone, but it has done uh, an entire generation of us a complete disservice because we don't have to worry about file structures at all, right? If you're, if you're used to just working in, in Android or, or Mac OS, and you're just mostly on your smart devices, it doesn't matter where you put those files, right? It doesn't matter, it, it's gonna find them. Old Windows is not necessarily designed that way. It's better than it used to be, okay? Um, if this doesn't make sense to you, that's okay. But ask me when, when we go to start saving files and, and I'm happy to kind of point you in the right direction. But moral of the story is, is if this makes any sense to you, put all your files, when, because today we're gonna make an assembly and we're gonna make a drawing and they're gonna reference these two part files. So put all four of those files in the same place on your computer. And that way, when I put them all in the same place on my computer, they'll all be happy. Okay, that, that would much be appreciated. I can pretty well work around that, but that's just good practice to do, okay? Questions, comments, complaints so far? Okay. Um, part of me is, most of me is just honestly just inclined to turn you guys loose on the tutorials and let you, um, and I just bounce around and answer questions. I, I can, if I'm going to go share screen here, right? So, um, I mean, I could, we could make an assembly, we could make a couple of parts and put them together in an assembly. But honestly, I, I really feel like it's, it's, it's this whole idea of watching me play a video game versus you actually playing the video game. Which one are you going to learn more from? You actually doing it. And then we go back later and talking about it. I think that we're gonna, all going to get more out of that. So I, I would much prefer to just turn you loose today and let you work on the tutorial. So what do we want to do? Um, if I hit this home button, the welcome to SOLIDWORKS, it brings up a little window and I'm going to go to the learn tab on it and I'm going to go to tutorials, right? And what I, so last time, and if you don't have lesson one done, do lesson one, right? Because you need the part file that we made from lesson one. You're going to need that because you see what they're doing in lesson two. You're going to take this part file you made in lesson one and you're going to make another part file and then an assembly showing how those two part files connect. And then I'm gonna have you do lesson three today. And lesson three is gonna have, you can see it's made a very small there, but you can see a preview of it is, is they're gonna have you make a multi-view drawing of the part that you made in, in lesson one. And they're gonna have you make a multi-view drawing of the assembly both, and then do a few things to it, right? So again, um, start on lesson two today, unless you don't have lesson one done, get lesson one done. Start on lesson two today. And, and just like we talked about last time, if you see this, um, like this sc a screen like this here, where it doesn't have steps one, two, three, four, et cetera, then you're welcome to read this, but you really just need to be hitting next because what you want is the ones where it says, here's how you do what we're asking you to do, steps one through whatever. Read through. Again, these, these little buttons in here, these are actual buttons, you can click on it and it will show you within SOLIDWORKS where that is, if it exists. Okay. If you have questions, again, ask me. I'll point you in the right direction. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna get out of your way. I, if I'm sitting down up here, it's because I don't wanna hover over you and make you nervous. Raise your hand and ask me a question. I'm here for you. I don't mind getting up, but if, if everybody's just cranking along, I'm, I'm just gonna let you guys work, okay? Let's do lesson two and lesson three today. And then there's assignment folders for those in Canvas. All right, guys. I'm going to stop recording here. So stop sharing and stop recording.